वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस लेक्चर वील सी डिफ्रेंशन क्वेश्चन मेथड फॉर एनालिसिस ऑफ ट्रेसेस विल बी ब्रीफली सी वॉट इज टेंशन क्वेश्चन मेथड हाउ वॉट आर टेंशन क्वेश्चन हाउ टू राइट जॉइंट इक्लोब्रम इक्वेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ टेंशन क्वेश्चन एंड ऑल्सो वील सी एन एक्साम्पल सो नो लेट सी वॉट इज टेंशन क्वेश्चन मेथड सो टेंशन क्वेश्चन मेथड इज बेसिकली नीट representation of our conventional uh, method of joints wherein we use the principle of joint equilibrium of each joint is taken to find the member forces okay the main advantage of tension quotient method is that it can it can be easily extended to space frames which is easy to difficult to analyze when we are doing method of joints okay so what we do here is like we will write the equilibrium equations sigma h equal to 0 and sigma v equal to 0 in case of planar stresses but we are representing these equations in terms of tension coefficients and joint coordinates so this is the major difference lying here the only thing is that the equilibrium equations are not written directly but instead it is replaced by something called as joint coordinates and tension coefficients so what is this joint coordinates so joint coordinates are nothing but the cartesian x and y coordinates of each of the joints so it is important that by finding out the joint coordinates of each of the joints uh, always try to keep all the joints in positive quadrant which is the first quadrant So okay, here is a small example where we have found out the joint coordinates of each of the joints in the truss. So it is very simple analysis here to find out the joint coordinates here. So have a look here. Now let's see what is tension quotient. This is important. So tension quotient is a name given to a term which is nothing but tension in the member divided by its length so tension coefficient is nothing but tension in the member divided by the length of the member so it is denoted by small tab where which is nothing but capital tab which is tension in the member divided by lab which is length of the member ab okay so it is obvious that the truss members are have both tension members as well as compression members so for a compression member the tension coefficient is going to be negative okay it is because compression is nothing but negative tension so now let's see how we represent the joint equilibrium equations in terms of which are nothing but sigma x equal to 0 and sigma y equal to 0 in terms of tension coefficients and joint coordinates for this let's take an example here which is a member ab okay it's a tensile member ab and the joint coordinates of a is x a and y a and joint coordinates of b is x b and y let's say the length of the member ab is lab okay and it is at an horizontal angle of at a certain angle of theta with the horizontal now if you want to find out the um x component of this force it is nothing but tab into cos theta that is horizontal component is nothing but tab into cos theta and the vertical component so horizontal component is going to be this tab into cos theta and the vertical component is going to be this tab into sin theta so the range please understand the tension in the member is called as tab So now let's, let's see what is cos theta from the joint equilibrium. Cos theta is nothing but x divided by length horizontal adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So adjacent distance x is given by x b minus x a. So cos theta is going to be x b minus x a divided by L a b. And sin theta is nothing but opposite by hypotenuse. So opposite is y intercept y distance which is y b minus y a. So sin theta is going to be y b minus y a by l. 
So if you substitute this cos theta and sin theta in the previous equation, course on component is nothing but TAB into cos theta. So cos theta is nothing but XB minus XA divided by L. So if you note carefully here, this TAB by LAB, this is nothing but our tension quotient. And course on component is tension quotient multiplied by the difference between the coordinates in the respective di x direction and vertical component is again similarly we substitute sin theta that is yb minus ya divided by lab here also tab by lab this is nothing but tension quotient t small t so vertical component is going to be tension quotient multiplied by difference in the coordinates in the vertical direction yb minus ya while doing a problem there should be conversion to do or express the equilibrium equation so considering the direction the right direction is taken as positive as well as upward direction is taken as the positive and whenever we write x component of any force in the member what we do is we'll write the tension coefficient of the member then multiply it by the x coordinate of the far joint minus x coordinate of the point for which the equation is stated okay similarly y component also it is nothing but tension quotient multiplied by y coordinate of the far joint first then the near joint y coordinate of the near joint so let's take an example here where there is a joint j where member jc jb ja and jd meets and also there is a force px and py acting okay so joint coordinates are also represented in the brackets so how to write equilibrium equation sigma h equals zero taking right side as positive so first we take tension in the member a j j a which is nothing but t j a so t j a into x x a it is a far joint minus xj plus tjb into xb minus xj tjc into xc minus xj tjd into xd minus xj and then we have a positive px force so plus px equal to zero if you take sigma v equal to zero taking the upward direction as positive again we will have tja into ya minus yj tjb into yb minus yj tjc into yc minus yj t jd into yd minus yj and there is a downward force py which means that we have to include minus py equals zero with that let's see an example we have a simple easy planar stress here so the first thing you have to do is you have to find out the reactions and also mark the joint coordinates and find the length of each of the members so it is a hinge here and a roller here at a roller and at a is a hinge so let's find out the reactions so horizontal reaction is going to be 30 to the left then in order to find the vertical reaction attack we can take my input o is equal to 0 so or a is equal to 0 so you get 30 into 3 minus sorry 30 into 3 plus 60 into 3 plus 90 into 6 minus rf into 9 equal to 0 so you get reaction at f is equal to 90 and at a is equal to 60 okay also you can mark the joint coordinates so it is important to note here right how to get joint coordinates of d nothing is marked there only thing is this is a similar triangle smaller triangle and the bigger triangles are similar so the height of d is going to be half of the height of bc as the base is exactly double for each of the triangle okay now let's start finding the member forces so so 
so in order to find out the member forces the first result we get is actually tension coefficient in each of the member okay so let's take the joint a and write the equilibrium equation so there is only two members meeting and three reactions are there so it will be easy for you to write the equilibrium equation so if let's take sigma h equal to 0 horizontal equilibrium equation so minus 30 then we have the tab tab into far joints x is 3 minus near joints x is 0 then we have tac so plus tac into far joints x is 3 near joints is 0 so 3 minus 0 should be equal to 0 so you get an equation of terms of tab and tac now taking sigma v is equal to 0 there is an upward force 60 so plus 60 then tab into 3 minus 0 plus tac into 0 minus 0 from here you can get what is tab value so tab is minus 20 and substituting in the previous equation you get tac is equal to 30 now the tab is a tension quotient which is negative which means that the force in the member ab is going to be compressive and its value is going to be value of tension coefficient multiplied by the length of ab so length of ab was 4.24 multiplied by 16 that is going to be around 84.8 it is nothing but 60 root 2 and if you multiply tac with the length of ac 3 meter so 3 into 30 it is going to be 90 the second joint joint B so when you consider the joint B there are three forces wherein this force in, in BA is already known TAB is also basically equal to TBA so first let's write the equation for sigma h equal to 0 so we have an horizontal force 30 positive in, in the positive direction so write plus 30 into TAB into sorry TBA into far end x 0 minus near end that is 3 0 minus 3 plus t b d into 6 minus 3 plus t b c into 3 minus 3 so from this equation you can find out what is t b d because we already know t a p value and t b c go is going to vanish okay so you get the t b d value as minus 30 which again means that tbd is also a compressive element okay so if you write sigma v is equal to 0 for the same joint b it is going to be tba into 3 minus sorry tba into 0 minus 3 tbc into 0 minus 3 then tbd into 1.5 into 3 so substituting you can get the value of tbc as 35 so this tbd and tbc are tension quotient values if you want to get the member force you have to multiply this with the corresponding length so tbd's length is 3.35 so 3.35 multiplied by 30 it is going to be 102.62 and tbc multiplied by 3 35 multiplied by 3 it is going to be 105 so carry out the analysis for the remaining joints also so if you substitute for joint c we already know the value of a c t c a and t c b the remaining two values can be found out which is t c d and t c e so this is going to be 102.62 and 180 mean then you go for the joint d in joint D, this and this value is already known. D, D, E is unknown. T, D, F is unknown. So you substitute, write down the joint equilibrium equation and you get his uh, simultaneous equations in terms of D, T, D, E and T, D, F. You can get the tension coefficient value. Once you get the tension coefficient value, multiply it with the length, you can get the number forces. So whenever, please note, whenever there is a negative value of 
tension constant it always means that the member is having compressive force so with that you can all the member forces so that's it for today's lecture about tension quotient method it is nothing but the method of joints but it is beautifully written in terms of tension quotients as well as the joint coordinates and it is easy to perform also the major advantage is that you can easily extend this vector representation to a 3d form also thank you